Hey everyone, it's David at Finish Line Factory, and you've joined me today at the Boca Raton Concourse event. Car show, they have like lots of different classic cars, uh, foreign cars, uh, exotics, all kinds of stuff. So let's go check it out. 68 Jag. Chevelle. I like this Chevelle. Here's uh, Mike's Pantera. And there's Mike. Hey. How's it going? Look at this, American Exotic. You got the, I think it's a Ford V8. This is a 66 275 GTB. Where'd you go? This is an early precursor to the, uh, like the F12. Unless they got some sort of a nuclear, how about me? I just heard two old guys arguing about how this shouldn't be in the Ferrari section because it's a Dino. But I think it's pretty cool. I know you guys are probably sick of all the Porsches from last week, but here's a 1973 911 Targa and a 74 2.7 Carrera. Look at that. It's in really good condition, too. Nineteen nineteen Meisenheldo Model A one. <laughs> is that is that so? What how, how have people said it? Me Meisenhelder, Meisenhelder, Meisenhelda. Oh, it's an American car. Yes. Oh wow, so this was built in Pennsylvania. It has your, uh, Batman steering. What? It's got ported cigarette lighter. Oh wow. It's got a lighted gas gauge. This is your car? It's, I work for the museum that it's from. Okay. Oh wow. That's interesting. You gotta know how to so, start so what's the... What's Actually, the... we have starting instructions in every one of our cars so that we know how to start. Advancing the timing, the acceleration, everything, because every car is different at that right, time. Yeah. So, yeah, so we have starting instructions in all of our cars, because our cars all run at the museum. So what's what's the point of the steering wheel tilting like that? It's a little weird. It's at least it's easier to get in. So because these doors, I mean, look at how narrow that is. Oh yeah. So you just this one it's straight. So you just tilt it out of the way. Tilt it out of the way and, and slide in. Yep. Oh nice. And then you lift it up and then you pull the pins out and lock it into place. You know, modern cars that are that have like electric. Uh, Steering and uh, steering adjustment and electric seats. Yes. Those actually move out. The seat will move back, and this the steering wheel moves out of the way for mm -hmm. you. So that's kind of like a early precursor yep. to that. Oh, nice. This is look at these wheels. Look at what are these like twenty twos? Go for your Honda fanboys. There's a the first S six hundred. This is the uh, precursor to the S two thousand. So it's powered by a 0 .6 liter engine. You, see you can see in the dashboard, it, fairway once again, right here, it kind of follows the same pattern as the S2000 where the uh, controls and stuff are all up here and it's very driver focused. And then the rest is down there, hidden away. So, there you go. In front of the car. Fender Mountain Mirrors. Horseless carriage. So I think after a certain year, Florida considers these cars to be horseless carriages. Even though that's, I think, I think that's a newer plate, but it's uh, basically for cars that are older than a certain year. Uh, they're no longer considered antiques, it's a horseless carriage. So this is a 31 Ford Model A town sedan, and it, it, actually, it actually comes with all of these tools, like the, the wrench, different wrenches, pliers, uh, actually it has, looks like a greaser right there. Um, I see this is like a jack, or no, that's a, that's a tire pump. So it actually came with all of these tools. So back in the day, you were actually expected to know how to maintain and repair your own car in case things broke down. Uh, now, nowadays, we have a, a whole network of tow trucks and stuff that can come save your ass, but that's what they had back in the day. So here's a 1972 Lamborghini Espada. Look at this thing. 
It's got it's got knack of ducks even back then. Yeah, I guess you're right. And it's a it's a four four seater. Yeah, it's a coupe. A really really long uh, roof and hatch. So here it's got a split window. So here's like the main window right here, and then there's a I guess this is what you're actually going to be looking out of, and then it'll be your view will be split. Let's see. Yeah, it's got a, some documentation in there, but yeah, check that out. You could pop the window out if you if you're if it was a little toasty back there. You needed to cool off. Uh, doesn't look like there's a whole lot of legroom. But yeah, you see they got the classic Lamborghini styling on the interior. Uh, if you look at the Countach and other other cars of this era, they all have, kind of have like the same sort of wide at the wide at the top, and then it kind of narrows down with the shifter in the middle. And over here, just a few cars down, they have a 69 Mira P400S. So, it's got a little bit of patina, some, uh, some little bit of rust there, but it's not a big deal. Wow. So the whole front end lifts up and then you can work on the car. You have easy access to all the suspension. There's the horn there. Spare tire. And, uh... One thing that's interesting about this car is that it's a transversely mounted V12. Usually these are longitudinally mounted. So it's really interesting to see something like that. Especially given how long these motors are. Uh, where would you fit the transmission? How would you fit the transmission? Let me see. Over here looks like there might be the water pump. And there's the intake. Folks, once again, please don't forget to vote for your favorite. Take a look car, at the interior. Your people's choice ballot. And the, the gated ballot shifter. boxes are located along the Gages. pedestrian pass down through the show field. They must be turned in no later than one o'clock. So let me see, I want to see how the transmission is mounted. The number of your favorite car, the number so. is located on the placard. Huh, I guess it's car. just uh, Once again, it's probably like please vote for your it could be that the transmission is underneath the engine one o'clock and that or behind the engine and then this is just that just serves to transfer the power over that's just a, sh a short bell housing cool so this car is actually for sale and I was speaking with the company handling the consignment and this was actually a barn find here's actually a picture of it in the barn that it was found in so you see you have like lawn mowers and tools and stuff and then there's just a Lamborghini Miura just sitting in the middle of the road of the, of the place. This is the second car in production. This is like, I, guess, I think this might be like serial number two. Uh, not sure. This is 3802, so I guess chassis 3802, I don't know what that means, but this, this could be the second P400S in, uh, in production. So, wow, that's fascinating. And it's going to be in, up, up for auction at the uh, next Amelia Island, so if you want to buy it, check it out. Here's a 1916 Ford Model T. Take a look at that. Tiny little four-cylinder engine. Probably, I think it makes like 15 horsepower. With, uh, yeah, th these cars actually back in the day, you had to manually advance and retard the ignition with that with one of these levers here. So shifter, I guess one of those might be the handbrake or the clutch. Thanks for your interest. You're welcome. <laughs> it's all gloss black. It might be this car might have been restored. Definitely must have been restored. It's over a hundred years old. So, really nice. Gloss black wheels. Huh. And this is a style that's kind of replicated today. People buy their cars and black out the wheels and black out the car and everything. So black and gold is a you know, very classic, very old uh, style. So I'm here with Susan. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi. And uh, this is the this is the uh, this is Susan's Model T, and uh, she actually has some pictures for us. 
she has I here. I do. Uh, this is what the car used to look like. Uh, in 1980. In 1980, about 30, is this 30 years ago? 40. -ish? 40 years ago? Well, now we're in 20, 30, 38 years ago. 38 years ago. Yeah, yes. so it's a little yeah. rough. From, well, there's uh, this is Keith right here. Just snappy young man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I guess they, they they bought the car from the original owner. My husband was with his father when um, when he bought the car from the original owner. The car right. was um, uh, bought new by the original owner, of course, and then was driven and put in the garage in 1926 okay. and wasn't driven again until after it was restored. So this car was driven for 10 years and then for just shoved into a barn? Shoved into a barn. God only knows what, you know, Model T's had a lot of um, damage because the roads right. weren't like they are now. So yeah, there was, or there are always were problems with the wheels and the axles and those kinds of things. Um, in addition to crashes because there weren't any street lights like we right, have right. now. And, and we didn't have more modern traffic. Control. Exactly, exactly. But it was all, all the parts were there. So okay. they weren't all, uh, by the time he started his restoration, um, there was some rust and some of the some of the fenders were replaced. I mean, even here, this car is probably like 60 years old and so right. it's still in pretty good condition. Right. Yeah, it's got a little bit of rust here or there. Sure. But, but it's not like falling apart. It's still, exactly. Like, it was kept, it's been kept in garaged or yeah. in a barn, yeah. uh, kept covered all yeah. those years. Um, and so then when we, uh, when he began to tackle the project, he did a lot of research looking at uh, the history of Model T's and just the availability of parts okay. and restoration. And he made an agreement with the gentleman who did the, uh, the body work that um, in order to keep the cost down and manageable for him, that he would do, so, they did like, and the guy was starting his, his business. So um, he did a, uh, they worked out a deal where my husband was essentially like a general contractor, did some of the, the gopher work, um, the, the running around, and handled some of the small parts for him uh, to let the, the master uh, restore work on the, um, on, the, on the parts that my husband could not tackle. Okay. So they, they formed a, like a, a working relationship, a partnership a, that evolved into a friendship. and. Uh, they, it took them about two and a half years to complete the, the restoration. It was a total frame off restoration, awesome. and uh, the result is what yeah, you see here. It's in incredible condition. Like it's, it looks like it's just better than it rolled off the factory. I kind of think it looks better than um, than what Henry did himself. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, awesome. Thank you, Susan. Okay. Thank oh, you very much. <laughs> Wrong hand. <Okay. laughs> so this is a 1964 Alfa Romeo Giulia TZ. And one notable feature that I, f I saw in this car is the rear end. It's called a cam tail or a cam back. And uh, that reminds me a lot of the, uh, the old Shelby Daytona Coupe. Now, I, th I think that feature is not something that's unique to the Daytona. I think it's actually a uh, common uh, automotive design. But it's not, it's not that common. So, see, you know, this car actually looks kind of cool. It looks, uh, I like how it's got that, that shape to it where it's like... like it's almost like a car, actually, if you think about it, because there's a trunk and there's, uh, that would be the hood. I kind of like that. It's got like a very tapered design. And if you look here, it's actually got a slight duck build to it. So, real nice. So this is a unique 1963 Corvette Z06. Uh, it has this special option. It gives it a 36.5 gallon fuel tank, and it's called the tanker. You know, like a, like a airline tanker. Uh, Look at this thing. It's a split window spring stingray. And uh, it's have a 360 horsepower V8. It's all black with a red interior. Oh, it's even got the window sticker. Oh, it's funny, the window stickers were that small back then. So this car looks like it has AM FM radio as an option. The 36 and a half gallon fuel tank was $262. Painted solid black with a four-speed manual transmission and it was sold new for $6,200. Look at that. It's got the... Check that out. It's got early fuel injection, probably mechanical fuel injection. It's, it's pretty damn cool. I didn't know they had fuel injection back then uh, in 63. 
It might be throttle body injection instead of uh, port injection. So uh, that, that 36 and a half gallon fuel tank was intended for off-road applications. Uh, not that you would be taking this off-road, but you could if you wanted to. Oh, this is really rare. See, uh, unlike the, the Shelby Cobra, which is a, a replica of this car, this is an AC Cobra. This is an original AC Cobra from 67. See, it doesn't have a roll bar. It's a very simple interior. In some cases, the body and the interior are actually simpler than some of the, uh, some of the replicas. Very nice. You can see the, the wheels are sunk into the body. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 12th annual... Check this out. This is a 1966 Oldsmobile Tornado, and this is one of the first high-powered front-wheel drive V8 cars. Now, you know that a lot of the cars, like the uh, Cadillac Seville and DTS and stuff, those are actually front-wheel drive. And this has a 425 cubic inch, 385 horsepower front wheel drive V8. Look at this thing. So three, 385 horsepower through 225 tires. And these are the old tires. So, Jesus. They were, they were actually concerned that the uh, axle shafts would sh Deborah would shatter Prettyman, because they, they the didn't awards. think that uh, uh, they'd be able Prettyman, to build something that could handle that much power out of a front wheel drive engine. But as a result of it being front wheel drive, that means there's no uh, rear end or axle shaft or, or drive shaft or anything, so you get a lot more passenger room. As a matter of fact, the floor is actually flat. So I think this might be leather or vinyl seats. And look at this. I think Jay Leno actually had one of these, and he converted it to uh, to rear wheel drive, which I think is kind of funny. Why would you do that? I don't know. It's like a premier front wheel drive car. Right? Wow. Look at this thing. Manual crank windows. 1966. Okay, folks. Oh, wait we're a second. About to begin our award ceremony, that, about to begin rolling that right there is your speedometer. So it like would actually roll as opposed to having like a like a regular um, dial that just revs. Just it just rolls. To the sides. We need people to clear the driveway wow. down the center. And it's in really good condition field. too. We have a lot of people here, so we so ask as, uh, you pop up headlamps. One of the first cars that have pop up headlamps. The driveway down and uh, these the little mirrors, the which are funny. So the the mirrors are so small given the size of the car, but yeah, Judges, look how much more space you have. And these cars are huge, especially in the 60s cars, but having it front wheel drive gives you even more space and even more trunk space. So, very nice. All right, guys. Well, I'm back in the Mustang, and I'm going to be heading home. So that was a that was a fun event, checking all these classic cars, uh, all the best best examples of these classic cars. So I'm gonna head home, edit this video, and I'll catch you guys later. If you like that video, subscribe and be sure to hit like and comment. Catch you later. Bye.